Hey guys, chapter 7 video here. We are now on section 6 in our textbook, so 7.6. Today in this video we are going to work on the essential question, how can I change a sum to a product? So we're going to dive right into this, and this is pretty crucial stuff, knowing how to change a sum to a product. And I'm going to show you some examples, and I hope that by the end of the video you feel kind of comfortable with the process. So, when we change a sum to a product, we call that factoring. We are going to factor x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use that generic rectangle. And I want to point out that this is the sum, and our job is to turn it into a product. So we're kind of doing the reverse of what we've practiced in class before. We're going to have this rectangle, but instead of knowing what the outside length and width are, we actually know what the inside is. We know that there's an x squared, a 3x, a 2x, and a 6. And I'm going to put the x squared and the 6 across from each other, and I'm going to put the 3x and the 2x across from each other. Now the reason I'm doing that is because we learned in class that you have to make Casey's rule work. And Casey's rule is our nickname for the fact that the diagonals have to multiply and be the same. x squared times 6 is 6x squared. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. They're the same thing. So that's really important that that's true for the rectangle to work. Now, what do we multiply to get x squared? Well, we do x times x. So we're going to put that on the outside edges. And then we're going to copy those x's to the other side. That way they match on both sides. Now, what do we got to multiply the x by to get these numbers? Well, we have to do times 2 to get 2x. And we got to do times 3 to get 3x. And 2 times 3 makes 6. That's perfect. So look at our answer. Our product is what's on the left and, and bottom. x plus 2 and x plus 3. So I'm going to make two big parentheses and write x plus 2 and x plus 3. And there it is. There's our product and our answer. Now, this one was pretty easy because the sum was given to us in a really nice way. Now let's try one that's a little more challenging. Let's factor 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. So same problem. We want to factor. This is our sum. We're going to turn it into a product. To do it, we're going to use that generic rectangle. But here's the dilemma. We're going to start setting up our rectangle, and we need four corners. We got 2x squared. We got a minus 5. But what about the negative 9x? How are we going to put that in the two corners? We're going to have to split it up. And it, split it up, we have a lot of options. Think about it. We could do negative 1x plus negative 8x. That makes negative 9. We could do 2 and 7, negative 2 and negative 7 makes negative 9. We could do 3 and 6, we could do 4 and 5. All of these options give us negative 9, but would split into those two corners. So the question is, is which one is the best choice out of all those choices? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a diamond. Do you remember the diamond problems? We're going to build a diamond. Why are we going to build a diamond? Because Casey's rule says that when you multiply the corners, they have to equal each other. 2x squared times negative 5 is negative 10x squared. I'm going to put that on top because I multiplied it. Now, negative 9x is kind of my problem child that I need to split up. So the question is, is what adds up to negative 9x but would multiply to negative 10x squared? It's a diamond problem. What adds and multiplies? So what are we going to use to get negative 10 and negative 9? That's the question. Well, let's think about this. We could do negative 1 times 10, negative 2 times 5. We could do 1 times negative 10 or 2 times negative 5. Those are the only things that really multiply to negative 10. Which one gives us a negative 9? Yeah, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So we're going to use 1x and negative 10x as our answer to our diamond. And that answer is what goes in our, in our boxes on the rectangle. 1x and negative 10x. And look, Casey's rule works. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10x squared. It matches up. All right, now that we've solved the diamond and the rectangle, we can do the rest of the work, which is the outside part of the rectangle. So x times x is x squared, but we need a 2x squared, don't we? So let's put a 2 on the top one. And then let's take that 2x down. What do we got to times 2x by to get negative 10x? Oh, we got times it by negative 5. All right, and then take that negative 5 over. What do we got to times negative 5 by to get negative 5? 
So if we times that by 1, we get negative 5, which means we have our answer. Our answer is x minus 5 and 2x plus 1. That's our length and width. That's our product. x minus 5 and 2x plus 1. And we've got our solution. Nice. Okay, let's try another one here. Example 3. Example 3 is 3x squared plus 10x plus 3. Now I want to factor this. So we're changing the sum into a product into two parentheses being multiplied together. And we're going to do that using the rectangle and the diamond. Inside the generic rectangle, we're going to have 3x squared and a 3. The trouble is the 10x. It's got to be broken up. We could do 5 and 5, or 2 and 8, or 6 and 4. Some sort of combination of 10 that's going to help us still meet Casey's rule. So to do that, we set up the diamond. We're going to do 3 times 3 is 9x squared. And we're going to put our 10x in the bottom of the diamond. What multiplies to the 9x squared but gives us 10x? That's the question. Well, we could do 3 times 3 is 9, but that does not give me 10. We could do 9 times 1, 1 times 9, that would give me 10. So we're going to do 1x and 9x to meet the diamond rules. And we're going to put 1x and 9x into our generic rectangle. Then Casey's rule works. 1 times 9 is 9 and x times x is x squared. Perfect. Okay, let's do the outside of our rectangle and we'll be done. So we know x times x is x squared, but we need a 3 this time, so we're going to put a 3 on there. Then we're going to take that 3x and put it down below because it has to match top and bottom. What do we times 3x by to get 9x? Well, 3. 3 times 3 is 9. If we take that 3 across, what do we multiply 3 by to get 3? Well, 1. So our answers are x plus 3 and 3x plus 1. There's our product. Our parentheses are going to be x plus 3 and 3x plus 1. So we write equals x plus 3 and 3x plus 1. And now we've got our sum and our product. And look at our work. It's all very nicely laid out. It's organized. We've got the rectangle. We've got the diamond. We've labeled it sum. We've labeled it product. And we're good to go. Okay, so I want you to give it a try now. Um, the sum I'm going to give you is x squared plus 3x minus 10. Right now you're going to hit the pause button on your device and you're going to go through that whole rectangle diamond process yourself. All right, hit the pause button now. Good luck. All right, you ready to check your answer? Let's see how you're doing here. So here's the rectangle. It's got x squared and negative 10 across from each other. Then we set up the diamond where you times it to negative 10x squared. 3x is our problem that we have to split up. So we got to multiply to 10, negative 10, but add to 3. So I'm thinking negative 2 times 5, negative 2x and 5x. Or you can do it backwards. You could put the 5x first and then the negative 2x. That part doesn't matter. And we're going to put that into our squares, into our corners on our generic rectangle. And then we know x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So the solution, the, the product, is x plus 5 and x minus 2. There it is, x plus 5 and x minus 2, double parentheses, labeled as a product. How did you do? Did you figure this out? This is the, this is the point where all these things we've been learning are coming together. Our rectangles coming together, our diamond process is coming together all to be able to do this sum to product. All right, so wrapping up the video here, just as kind of a, a closure, I just want you to remember that if you want to go from a sum to a product and find those double parentheses, you're undoing that whole generic rectangle process. So you're using the generic rectangle and the diamond to figure that out. And eventually, there's going to be a purpose. You're probably wondering, well, why am I doing all this work to get a product? You should be thinking that, like, why do I care about double parentheses? Eventually, it's going to be very helpful in some of the future things we do. So just trust me on we need to get it down because the next step is figuring out how we're going to use it. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.